You're about to see something really strange. This man is picking up a black mamba, one of the world's deadliest snakes. The venom of a black mamba contains these potent neurotoxins which can paralyze your body and stop your breathing, killing you within 30 minutes. And left untreated, the bite of a black mamba has a 100% fatality rate. Now, pay close attention. The man presents his arm to the black mamba and allows it to bite. While we wait to see what happens to the man, let me tell you, this is not his first rodeo. He's been bitten by highly venomous snakes, including taipans, cobras, and rattlesnakes over 200 times. And he's also injected himself with syringes containing their venom over 600 times. Let's check back in with the man. Notice he seems just fine. He hasn't rushed off to hospital. He's not on the floor. He's just being normal. At this point, you might be wondering, why is he doing this? And how is he still alive? Tim Freedy started collecting venomous snakes around 20 years ago and keeping them at his home in Wisconsin. It's a weird hobby, yeah, but each to their own. He knew there was a risk of the snakes biting him and he had to somehow develop immunity to their venom. This sounds like some sort of villain origin story, but anyway, Tim started milking his snakes for their venom and repeatedly injecting himself with it. As you can imagine, there's no instruction manual or web page on how to do this. He was kind of gambling with his own life. And disclaimer, do not try this home. And he also had a wife and little kids at home at the time, so you can imagine they weren't too happy about this. And one night, things did go wrong. Tim was milking his Egyptian cobra for its venom, and then it twisted its head around and bit him on the finger. At that point, he had a little bit of immunity towards the Egyptian cobra, so he felt okay. But then, just an hour later, he was handling his monocle cobra, and it bit him on the right bicep. And it turned out he had enough immunity for one bite, but not two. The venom of the monocled cobra paralyzed his diaphragm muscle and he stopped breathing and then he ended up in hospital comatose for literally four days. But this incident didn't stop him, it actually made him more determined to become immune to snake venom. So from 2001 to 2018, he exposed himself to venom 856 times and each time he gradually increased the dosage so that he became more and more immune to the snake venom. By one point, he was able to survive snake bites that should have been lethal. Oh yeah, there's some fang holes in there. And Tim started to think bigger. What if he could take what he learned from this self-experimentation and use it to create some sort of universal anti-venom? An anti-venom that could cure any snake bite anywhere in the world. Let me explain. Let's just say you're out on a bushwalk and you disturb an eastern brown snake. And these are very venomous snakes. The snake bites you and it's like, oh my God, no. So you get rushed to the hospital and given a vial of anti-venom. The anti-venom contains little proteins called antibodies and they bind to venom toxins, neutralizing them. And you might imagine that this anti-venom is something that's produced in some futuristic high-tech lab? Well, no. We've actually been making anti-venom in the same way for over 100 years. And the process is absolutely insane. So let's say for brown snake anti-venom, what happens is there are these brown snakes and they're being kept in a special reptile facility and some very brave people get the snakes and they milk them for their venom. This involves wrangling the snake and getting it to bite down through a thin membrane and release several milliliters of their venom into a small collection cup. Any wrong move and the snake might scratch or bite the handler and they could end up in hospital or literally dead. So once the venom's collected, it gets shipped off to a farm. And this farm is filled with animals, usually horses. These horses are injected with the snake venom. And then in response, their bodies produce these antibodies. And remember the antibodies are the special proteins that bind to the venom toxins and stop them from working. The horse blood is harvested and the antibodies are extracted and then put in a vial. And that's your life-saving anti-venom. It's a crazy, complicated, dangerous process, right? And it needs needs to happen specifically for every type of snake. The antibodies that are made only recognize and bind to certain venom toxins. So if you have this brown snake bite and someone gives you taipan antivenom, it won't work. This is a problem for several reasons. First of all, let's say you're out on this bushwalk and then you get bitten by a snake and then it slithers away before you have a chance to see what species it is. Or it bites you and you see that it's like brown and green with some patterns on it and you're like, who knows what this species is? You know, how do you know what antivenom you need? Or let's say the snake that bites you is quite rare and not, not found in the region that you're in. And then you go to the hospital and they don't have that particular antivenom. Or the snake is super rare and there's no antivenom that's even made on earth for that particular snake. And then good luck. So scientists want to make a universal antivenom. They call this the holy grail. This antivenom isn't specific to any type of venom or any type of snake. It can cure all snake bites.
Anyway, back to Tim Freedy. Over the years, he built up a bit of a reputation as the crazy snake guy. He started offering himself up as a guinea pig to various research groups and organizations. He got rejected a lot and a lot of people said that he was a little unhinged, a little crazy. But then in 2017, he ended up talking to the Californian research company, Centivax. Now, Centivax were also on a mission to create this universal anti-venom. And so they decided to take the plunge and collaborate with Tim. First, the Centivax scientists took a sample of Tim's blood and they wanted to understand what kinds of antibodies were in his blood after being exposed to all these different snake venoms over the years. And they found something unusual. Tim's blood contained antibodies that would bind to multiple types of snake venom. It's like his immune system saw that he was getting exposed to different types of venom all the time and decided to create a broad defensive shield. The scientists were most interested in two of Tim's antibodies, which bound to the neurotoxins of elapid snakes. Now the elapid snakes are a family of the world's deadliest snakes, think taipans, mambas, cobras, etc. They kill their victims with neurotoxins that essentially stop your brain from communicating with the rest of the body. And this is a real problem when you need to do things like breathe. <laughs> They created what they call an antivenom cocktail of these two antibodies and another small molecule. Now, it's not a cocktail I would like to drink, but it sounds very useful because what they did was test it in mice. They exposed the mice to lethal doses of venom from 13 of the world's deadliest elapid snakes and found that the mice were protected completely from any bad effects. And they also found that the mice were partially protected from the venom of another six elapid snakes, meaning that they eventually died from exposure, but after some hours. Now, this doesn't exactly replicate what happens in real life. See, these mice were getting exposed to venom in the laboratory and then, you know, immediately getting this anti-venom. In the field, there would be a bit of a delay between those things happening. Plus, this experiment was done in mice, so we don't know how effective this anti-venom cocktail would be in humans. Regardless, this is pretty cool. To go from the usual anti-venom that protects you against one snake, you go to 13 snakes, and these 13 are some of the deadliest snakes on earth. This anti-venom cocktail made with antibodies from Tim Freedy's blood, it's not exactly a universal anti-venom. There are still other types of toxins and other snake species to target, but we're a whole lot closer to that holy grail. 